Welcome to the San Jose Hockey Now podcast. This is Shang Peng, editor-in-chief of San Jose Hockey Now. You can also find my work at NBC Sharks and on Twitter at Shang underscore Peng. And I'm Keegan McNally. I'm uh, on Twitter at halfwall underscore hockey. You can find my work at halfwallhockey.com or at San Jose Hockey Now. Uh, this week on the podcast, uh, Shang and I will be revealing our preseason top 10 San Jose Sharks prospects. It's going to be a very long episode, a very good episode. <laughs> Uh, headed into the 2023-2024 season. Um, we spent hours, days, watching these prospects and talking to uh, NHL scouts and other league sources about all of these prospects and, and some few that we're not going to mention today. Um, so without further ado, let's do this kind of like top 10 countdown style. So we'll do Shanks 10, my 10. Uh, of course, you've probably seen my full rankings, or if you haven't, uh, my full rankings are at half-wallhockey.com. Uh, where I go through top 20 as well as some honorable mentions of the Sharks prospects. So 30 um, prospects at all, all written up. <laughs> yep. 30 prospects, 30, maybe 35 um, <laughs> with little blurbs about some of them, not, not full, full breakdowns, but uh, check it all out there. If you want to, you probably haven't heard Shang's list yet. And his is kind of vetted with some more sources. So uh, let's throw it to Shang to start. Well, you better not have heard my my list yet. Yeah, because I've, I've only uh, shared it with a few people. So yeah, um, we will all get to, uh, we're going to do our top 10, but we will get to sort of uh, honorable mentions or guys that we might have missed a- after our top 10. Um, so I talked with, um, boy, uh, I think, five six a half dozen uh nhl scouts or uh or league sources about all of these prospects just to get a a kind of a a, an idea about you know my my rankings um as opposed to 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 keegan's it's just kind of uh yeah uh uh, we're gonna get into that uh, right now and so anyway Number ten, and uh, wish we had a, a drum roll, a drum roll here, but uh, uh, <laughs> we got to work on that. Add to the yeah, budget we'll next time. <laughs> but uh, number ten, uh, I have uh, a Casper uh, Halton, and of course, Halton was the Sharks' second round uh, draft pick, twenty twenty three, big uh, Finnish winger uh, with a big shot. Uh, but I would say that Halton, um, you know, he he kind kind of comes up at, at number ten, but uh, he's not um, he's not a necessarily a strong number ten. I had some people telling me that uh, uh, one scout told me. Uh, maybe Havlid, uh, Matias Havlid, the defenseman, uh, instead of uh, Halton in here. It's close for for this scout, uh, but I'm gonna stick with uh, with uh, with Casper uh, uh, right here. And so, anyway, I think uh, King and I we agree on our number ten here. Yeah, that's actually the uh, we've had a we think we have a few that we agree on on this list mm-hmm. actually. Um, but yeah, t- Halton and ten kind of feels right around that range, and I think you're right when you said that there's probably some wiggle room there between like 10, 11, 12, 13, maybe. Um, they're kind of all in the same grouping. Um, I agree. I like Haltonen as a, a project in terms of, I think the Sharks picked him not to be ready to play NHL hockey next year. Sure. Um, yeah. He's kind of like a farther along project. Um, he's got a great shot. Like you said, he um, plays the game kind of like a, pseudo power forward slash power sniper kind of game. Um, but just there's a lot of things that I think need to round out with his game um, in terms of his playmaking and, and some of his defensive effort stuff that I think is going to take a, a couple of uh, years to really sort out. And we have news on him too, that he's um, not news news. We've announced this a couple weeks ago, but he's coming to North America um, to play in the OHL, uh, which is I think a good uh, step for his development instead of being over in the finish league. Um, so yeah go ahead so uh yeah um i think uh i, I think i think what happened in, uh, he's a guy that you know so young that can definitely see that um you know he has a good year he could he can he can you know fly up this list you know and so um you mentioned uh, we talked about this on this podcast that uh, Halton didn't exactly uh, blow the doors open at the recent uh, World uh, Junior Summer Showcase, but mm-hmm. it's just one tournament, and so you know we'll we'll see. But uh, there's definitely things to like about his talent level, which obviously uh, reason why he got picked in the second round, and reason why a lot of scouts uh, do like him. Uh, moving on to number nine, my number nine, and uh, this might uh, be controversial, and I did get a lot of pushback on this, but number nine I have Thomas Bordo. 
And Borrello, as recently as last year, actually last year at this time, he probably was the Sharks' number two prospect after Willie yeah. Mecklin. And so this tells you, uh, one, uh, that a Sharks' uh, prospect pool has uh, deepened quite a bit, and it, and it has. You know, a lot of these the, a lot of these guys in my top ten and Keegan's top ten are guys that were added in the in the last uh, in the last year. Um, but also too though uh, that Borrello, even though he was an AHL All Star last year. Um, there are a lot of questions about his overall game, um, things with um, his uh, body language, his defensive effort, his attitude. Uh, those are questions that we didn't really talk about two years ago because um, they're well, the Sharks didn't have a lot of prospects <laughs> a couple of years ago. But I think also, too, um, you know, that that was in the, the last uh, vestiges of the Doug Wilson slash Joe Will era and. Maybe Borrello got kind of the, kind of the, you know, he 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 got he got in those games right at the end of the season, got a lot of people excited, and there was reason to be excited from his cup of coffee from 2021-22. But um, I don't know if his game has grown enough since then, though. He hasn't taken that next next kind of step. But anyway, a couple things that I've heard from scouts. Um, and again, yeah, I got some pushback on putting Borrello uh, so low and. Um, I will say that uh, Bordalo, um, if Bordalo hits or if Bordalo takes a big leap this year, I, and I'm talking about like, you know, the mental space, the defensive commitment, things, things that, that are very controllable. Yeah. If he takes a big step there, then like he, he's, he's right back up there in like the top five discussion. Um, so the talent is there. Uh, but anyway, uh, so uh, one uh, one scout told me that uh, he definitely have Bordalo ahead of uh, Gushin and Lund, so that tells you kind of who I have ahead of him. And uh, <laughs> another another scout said, yeah, I definitely have Bordalo a couple spots higher than 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 nine here. Uh, however, <laughs> uh, another scout said uh, had uh, actually because I asked him in general about uh, smallish sharks forwards, right? And Gushin and Tristan Robbins and Bordalo all share the sort of the uh, the size thing, but also they were all drafted in the same uh, in the same draft, the 2020 draft. And um, he actually had of the smallish sharks uh, a forward center wingers. He had Gushin and Robbins ahead of Bordalo on his own list. Uh, mm -hmm. But he 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 reminded, and I just said it that Borlo has a higher ceiling than all these players, but also he has a low floor too. And so could you know it's really a, a big year for 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 Thomas this year, I think. And it's uh, you know it, it, there's a little bit of a a hit or miss, boom or bust kind of kind of uh, mm -hmm. potential uh, uh, with them. And um, so yeah, so I I so I I really like. Uh, I'll, I'll close up with this. I really like uh, Bordalo's talent. I always have. I think I've been uh, pretty, uh, pretty strong about that over the last uh, couple, a couple of years. Uh, but then you hear the other stuff that, you know, not to say that like just using Gushin as example, right? Gushin's not a perfect defensive player by by any means. Sure. Um, yeah. No one, no one, no one is saying that. You know, Gushin's never going to win a Selkie. You know, if if he mm -hmm. hits, but. Um, there aren't any, there aren't really any too many questions though that I hear about Gushin's, you know, kind of compete and attitude and, 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 and that, and that sort of thing, you know? And so, um, so as much as I like Bordalo's talent, and if you ask me on a pure talent level, I, he has more talent than Gushin, I, I, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, there's, there's that kind of the, the mental stuff, you know, Bordalo is, kind at least last year i think maybe he got in his own way i guess i guess that's a way a way to put it he got in his own own way last year and if he can get out of his own way then he's i think going to have a productive angel career and if he can't then yeah that's well that's 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 why he's sort of a uh, um uh, a falling on on my list and other list and so anyway uh keegan uh who do you got at number nine yeah and and I'll have a lot of stuff to say about Bordalo too. Yes, you have Bordalo a little higher, so but a little bit yeah. higher. <laughs> little um, I even got pushed back for where I had him. So you at nine is, <laughs> it's it's um, you might get a lot of hate. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but uh, at nine, I think uh, so. At nine, I've got uh, Matthias Havlid, mm -hmm. um, which I've watched a lot of Havlid, and I think Sharks have a, a few prospects that are kind of similar to him. 
Um, but I think he might be one of the sure, surer defensemen that the Sharks have outside of a few guys that we'll talk about in a minute. Right. right. Um, but he, he's an interesting player. So he's going to go back to Sweden with um, Beastad and play on um, uh, Lin Choping. He's steadily moving up the lineup there. He uh, got drafted last year in the second round by the Sharks in 2022. Um, then he was injured uh, to start the year last year in Sweden. Uh, so he started off a little slow. Once he got like his, his feet under him a little bit, he started to do a little bit more on the ice. And, and obviously his, the hallmark of his game is he has like a, a very fantastic point shot. Mm-hmm. He's got a good wrister. He's got a good one-timer. And he kind of uses that to uh, produce offense in the SHL. Um, but he, uh, he's a little bit shorter. And that's always been the knock on him. He's like 5'10", 5'11", or so. Um, and it's, it's hard for those kind of guys that don't have like all world talent to to really pop at the NHL level offensively. Um, sometimes these guys end up just being really, really, really good AHL defenders. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think Havla just has a very well rounded game, even though he is a little bit shorter. That I, I like him in at this like number nine slot, um, and and obviously his improvement too is, is what I really like about his his um, projection is that he didn't really fizzle out when he moved up because he was playing like the J twenty level. Um, in his draft year and then moved immediately into the SHL and he looked fine. Like he, you know, held pace as like a 19 year old defenseman coming off an injury. So I, I like his projection and he's played well at all the international games that I've watched him into. Um, so I, I like him here, but I could see where he could maybe be in this like middle ground of nine to 13 or so. Right, right. Well, I would say for myself that like he would have been if I had a number 11, uh, he would have been it. And um, I mentioned uh, a one scout said that he'd have Havilland instead of Halton in that 10. Mm-hmm. And I had another scout uh, that told me that he had Havilland, uh definitely in the top 10 and ahead of my number eight. And wow. so people people like them. And so I might be a little lower on him on on my list than I should than I should be. But like you said, though, I think that or we're talking about uh, maybe seven through, uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, I wouldn't say 13, but maybe the seven through 11, seven yeah. through 12, uh, that, that you can kind of, um, you can kind of, uh, they're kind of interchangeable. Um, I, I, you know, maybe, you know, of this, of this group of prospects. And so I'm also teasing too that our number six, uh, my number six, at least is lower on some list that I've seen, but, um, other people and myself uh, uh, like him quite a bit. So anyway, we'll mm-hmm. we'll get to number six when we get there, though. But uh, let's go on to uh, our our number eight. And I mentioned that uh, this number eight that a scout that I spoke with would put Havlid uh, over him. But uh, uh, for me, my number eight is the Neo Gushin. And um, Gushin, uh, um, again, yeah, that's a little bit of a, of a spicy take, uh, like you had uh, maybe having him ahead of Bordalo. But uh, I like uh, Gushin's uh, compete. Um, I like, you know, I like his overall. Obviously, he's a small guy, but there's never uh, really an overall question about his about his compete, about his attitude, and and all that sort of thing, you know. So I think that uh, mentally, you know, he's in the kind of seems like he's in the right place to kind of maximize his NHL career. And um, so, uh, whereas though the the scout I talked to uh, talked to that wasn't as fond of Gushin, his quote is, "I'm not confident in Gushin's future at all." <laughs> oh so, boy! But that's a fair point. Again, though, you know this this tier of prospect, like again, I think seven through through twelve. Like, if you get a a, a couple of them to pan out, then then you're doing well. You're not going to get seven through twelve on 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 this list on our list uh they're not all not all of them are going to work out and be good nhl players Mm -hmm. and uh, like i said i will i will say this again that like i do like bordelow's overall talent package more than gushin's um if if bordelo hits he should be a better player than gushin but i feel a little bit uh safer maybe with 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 gushin i guess so um so that's why i have gushin a little bit a little bit higher than uh than bordelo so anyway who you got in the break Spicy take there. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think, uh, so my number eight, uh, I think this is interesting because the bordelo Gushin discussion, I think is where we're headed with this. And my number sure. eight is, um, is Thomas Bordalo, Um <laughs> which you have at number nine and ahead of Gushin, uh, or behind Gushin, I should say. Um, I also have him behind Gushin. I'll reveal that in a minute. But Bordalo 
is interesting because you're right. I think he last year he was probably number two in the shark system uh, after his, um, especially after he came over and put up like five points in eight games yeah. in the NHL last year. Um, his his high that, level of like like when he is <laughs> on like at his best, he is definitely NHL caliber skill. Yeah, right. I don't. I think is, we saw that, but like. Yeah, my issue with him is is just where he places into a lineup with the things that you've mentioned, right? With the defensive effort issues, with the defensive coverage issues. Like my biggest thing with him has always been his positioning on the ice defensively is just poor. Like he doesn't really recognize where he needs to be to um, like stop, you know, any kind of transition plays. Really, not any. I shouldn't say any, but like he, he's, his positioning is just not what I've come to see from a lot of good defensive forwards. And um, so if he doesn't have good positioning, a lot of coaches will deflect to putting him on the wing, but Bordelow doesn't play well on the wing. That's kind of the biggest thing is he doesn't have the forechecking effort or like the overall mindset to really grind out pucks on the wall and get him to the center of the ice. He plays better on the center of the ice. Like he, he's a good playmaker. He's got great skill. So it's hard for a coach to be like, okay, I'm going to put this guy in as my X center third line, fourth line center. When he knows that, like defensively, it's going to be a little bit lax. When those are the lines that are supposed to cover um, defensively very well, right, right. So, he might be a classic out. case where he's obviously talented offensively, but mm-hmm. he's not talented enough that that can carry him. Like, exactly. Just that without the other stuff, and that's and the other stuff that his, yeah, his natural position is center. That that's where he's stuck. He can't play on the wings and be like your top six winger. Um, because he's just that's not his position and and you're right he's not a talented enough i think to be a top six center as of now obviously things change yeah and on just the offensive side yeah but just on offensively i don't think he is so he's kind of this middle ground um where again he has this higher ceiling but low floor if he doesn't hit um or change the way that he kind of plays the game right now and it, his season was also very up and down like he started off pretty hot and he shot a lot more than he's used to like he was you know putting in goals for the barracuda left and a right but um then he kind of like cooled off after he got named to the ahl all-star game which was awesome uh his nhl tape was not very good when he came over uh for the eight games at the end of the year this year so i don't know i'm, I'm just a little bit lower on Bordelow than i have been in the past and um, i think you're right to kind of slot him down especially with how many prospects the sharks added in the past year all right, who's your, um, what are we on, eight, seven? Uh, no, seven. Seven, <laughs> yes. Who's your seven, Chang? At uh, number seven, I have uh, Cam Lunn. And, um, you know, Cam, a uh, second-round pick uh, uh, last year, um, uh, had a pretty good overall year, and I think that the Sharks were very happy with him. I think that um, I did a – I've done rankings, uh, recent ones, where he was, you know, kind of at the back end of the top five. Um, I think though that, um, you know, the road junior summer showcase, uh, or just that area, you know, also just that road juniors, uh, training camp. I don't know if he, uh, he, he, he flashed as much as you hope also going back to the uh, development camp and a prospect scrimmage. And of course, Keegan talked about, uh, Lund's uh, performance, uh, uh, there at the uh, road junior summer showcase a couple of weeks ago on our podcast. But anyway, though, um, got some uh, very interesting though, information about Lund, uh, uh, from a scout. And this is all just reading off of uh, uh, verbatim now. Um, so uh, Lund took a step back at Northeastern uh, this year in this uh, scout's opinion. Uh, actually, the, the scout might have him behind Gushin and Bordolo, which is uh, uh, certainly, uh, um, you know, I think Keegan, you had him behind. <laughs> so we yeah, talk about I'll him a second. Him but, a bit, yeah. um, but anyway, though, uh, he, but he, uh, this scout, though, didn't uh, blame, uh, necessarily put it all on Lund, though. Um, he said that uh, Lund is in a tough spot because the Northeastern uh, head coach is, uh, calls him a tough dude. He's not bad, but just wants guys to play a certain way. And he cited Coangelo with the Ducks as also struggling to play for this coach. And, you know, this coach, you know, these are all things that you've heard before. And uh, the coach wants two-way, 200-foot commitment, uh, you know, maybe call it low-risk hockey, um, less freelancing and individualism. And so that makes sense that a guy like Lund that is sort of the when you look at him, you know, off the bus, he's one of those guys off that bus that looks like, like maybe like a Helton and two that 
they 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 should be dominating uh, out there. And you know, they've got the size. You know, uh, Lund can skate, Lund can shoot. You know, and so so when when you see him not make quite the impact that you expect, be it at development camp or at uh, the World Junior Summer Showcase, then you wonder, you know, well, you know, what's 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 going on a little bit, you know. And so anyway, though, uh, when we talk about Lund and Northeastern, though, like, I think, though, that uh, if things work out, you know, if basically, you know, uh, the trick with a guy like Lund is that is that he learns to play sort of the right way. I mean, it's the same thing with Bordelow. Learns to play the right way, but he doesn't lose his his skills. His skills are still apparent. So if you if you blend that, then that that becomes a legitimate angel player, a legitimate, you know, playoff caliber, middle six, top six player. And so Lund is, of course, younger than Bordelo, so we give him a little more runway. He's also a little bit bigger, and so that that will help him too, uh, just negotiate, you know, pro hockey and stuff. Um, and so anyway, um, Lund is sort of at a place where, yeah, maybe a little bit of a step back, like this scout says, but there is a lot of talent there. And if if Lund can kind of, you know, if you can sort of, well, you know, I don't know, break is the right word, but kind of like break Lund's game a little bit, but then build him back up into mm-hmm. a more complete player, then you have then you have a you know a, a prospect that's going to be we will be talking about him in, in the top five. And so we'll see, you know, so again, another big year uh, uh, for uh, for this prospect. Um, but right now, though, yeah, I have him at number seven. Yeah, the um, I'll talk a little bit about Lund. Lund, I yeah. think, was 11 on my list. Um, mm-hmm. So so just outside of this, this top 10 um, and him and, and you mentioned Halton and him and Halton are like not comparable, I mean, comparable in some ways, but similar kind of thing, right? They're project players. Um, great size, great shot, and then you kind of try and build out the rest. Lund's yeah. a better skater. Lund's better in transition than Halton, and I think. Um, but Halton does have a better shot than Lund, even though shot Lund's shot is pretty good. Um, but yeah, that that quote about um, his tough time in Northeastern. When I watched him there, it was just kind of up and down, and that whole like like low risk hockey thing. It sounds like ah, oh, it's just a coach having some hockey speak or whatever. But I think that's that's true for Lund. I don't think he's got a very good like b game and if you've heard of like a a games and b games some scouts use that to tie it try and like what's their a game what's the thing that they make their money on is it their playmaking their shooting whatever um and then their b game is all the stuff they do when they can't do that thing um do they do anything or do they suck at doing something or are they good at doing something one just doesn't really do a whole lot after after his a game if he's not in the offensive zone it's you know and he does have good transition but he doesn't really uh, understand the cycle defensively to get the puck to then transition very well. Um, but if you, you know, that just takes time too. A lot of times the the prospects that come from USA Juniors aren't as well rounded uh, in the beginning, and then when they get through college, like two, three, four years, they really come out as well rounded hockey players. So I think you're right. A couple more years, if he does round out his game really well, he has all of the other tools to really mm. be like in this top. Uh, like five, six, seven area yeah. for the for the Sharks. That's what I'll say on Lund. My number seven. It's not Lund. Uh, my number seven is. I'm probably going to say probably just my favorite Sharks prospect, just because uh, it's Daniel Gushin. Mm. Uh, so I have Bordelow eight, Gushin at seven, and it kind of goes back to that topic about what is Bordelow as a position player and what is Gushin. Bordelow is a playmaking center at his core. But he's it's hard for him to slide into a lineup in that, like I said. Gushin is a scoring winger that loves the power play. It's not hard. It's like it's hard to get there into the NHL, but it's a lot easier to get into that position in the NHL than is a playmaking center in the NHL. Sure. So coaches are a little bit more. That's his first thing that I have over Bordelow is they're a little bit more likely to play Gushin above Bordelow just based on their position. Um, second is that Gushin has a little bit more effort. Well, actually, a lot more effort than Bordalo does in the defensive zone. He's not as physically developed as Bordalo. Like, Bordalo is a better physical player. Yeah, stronger. Um, stronger, are, uh, like, on the boards, all that. Gushin isn't strong on the boards yet. He's still very tiny, and that's, like, going to be his thing forever. He's, he's very tiny. Um, they're similar, like, height. I think Bordalo is probably an inch or two taller. Um, but, yeah, it's just Gushin. It just has that effort level. He has the positioning. Um, and 
has the game that I think he's above Bordalo in my mind. He's also just got a fantastic shot. And when he's playing on like his game, you can really tell that it's like, he's got like a little bit of a twinkle in his eye and a little bit something special that is hard to find like on the Sharks prospect list. Um, aside from your very, very top of the lineup guys here. So I don't know. I love Gushin. I've watched him for years now and he just, he grows his game. Like, although it's still like highlighted by a fantastic shot and skill and transition and good skating, it just grows. Like he gets a little bit more um, defensively aware. He's getting a little bit stronger on the puck. Um, he's doing a little bit more back checking than he used to do. And I like it. Uh, so I'm really hoping that he finds a spot in this, probably on the Barracuda that, that gives him all the power play minutes. And he really puts up like a point of game season in the NHL. I think that's what he needs to prove that he can move up. Sure. But I love Gushin. That's the, <laughs> that's my answer. <laughs> um, so that's our number seven. All right. Um, so we've finished our seven through 10. So I think now it's uh, time to move on to number six. Um, Shang, who do you have for your number six? I have a uh, Henry Thrun at number six and um, uh, one scout, uh, you know, gave Thrun a little more credit because Thrun has shown, you know, has already played angel games and has shown a, a, a degree of competency in, in pro hockey. But he, he said that sort of, if we're going to tear this out, that Thrun is kind of in his own tier as opposed to, so he's ahead of, uh, for I think uh, a few people that I've talked to, and no one really pushed back on Thrun being this high, uh, but that you know he is ahead of the group that we've just talked about, the Bordalo and the Gushins mm -hmm. and the Havlids and, and and that type. Um, and so yeah, uh, I I know that uh, there's some projections that maybe he's more bottom pairing. Um, you know, I, I I like his game a lot. I can see him still uh, fitting him. You know, middle pairing. I don't know if he's going to be a, a top sure. pairing defenseman, but you know, I can see middle pairing uh, for him. And he's just very very solid. Um, I think uh, you're you're very very sure about uh, about him and his NHL chances, and that uh, he's going to be a contributor uh, uh, in the coming years. Just you know, question of how how much how good can he be. Yeah, it, um, it reminded me of when Ferraro kind of stepped in. They're they're not really similar defensemen, but that whole mm -hmm. like jump out of college and then like hold your own kind of thing in the NHL is, is hard to do. Um, and he looks great. I mean, it's only eight games, right? Anybody, if you're on your game, sometimes you can look like an NHL player for eight sure. games. Um, so, and Thrun was coming off like, you know, pretty heavy reps in the NCAA. He was the captain of Harvard. Um so he was stepping right into like already a competitive environment from a competitive environment. So it's hard to say exactly if that's going to be his entire future is that he's that steady, but it definitely mm -hmm. was good to show it right away. There was no, like, I'm worried. I'm scared. I'm nervous. It was, you know, just cool as a cucumber kind of thing. Right. Right. <laughs> the, right. I, right, I, right. I, I like a lot of his like um, transition passing. I think is really good. Mm -hmm. There's some questions yep. I think you had as well about his, um, like overall foot speed, I think. Yeah, I think everybody's really question is his feet. Uh, you know, if his feet were better, then he'd be, you know, top three prospect here or, or, or whatnot, you know. But uh, his feet are probably going to be the limiting factor. It's not his compete. It's not his hockey brain. Um, mm -hmm. He has he has skills with the with the puck, too. Like you mentioned, uh, his first pass. Um, so far, he's shown that that's a very reliable first pass. And he can make a couple of those highlight reel ones, too, some nice ones, too. And so all that seems pretty, uh, uh, pretty sound and reliable. But the feet, uh, we're not so sure about. Mm -hmm. And a little spoiler alert, Henry Thrun is also number six on my list as well. <laughs> um, I think that's interesting, like in his own tier, because it feels like the prospects that are below him on that list, uh, which we have a lot of the similar ones, um, are could be like middle of the lineup guys if they, everything kind of works out. Right. Um, but then Thrun is kind of like feels like he could be in the NHL and maybe into this middle pairing um, step into higher roles if necessary. I, well, I think it there's a certainty a too, right? Yeah. yeah, safer. Yeah, then uh, like a Havlet. Havlet could conceivably be a top four guy too, but mm -hmm. um, you know it's harder to see that right now, obviously, because Havlet's you know at least a year away from coming over here. Yeah, yeah and there just feels like a little bit more certainty with Run. I mean, I think his, his skating needs to improve a little bit. I like his positioning defensively mm -hmm. a lot, um, but his, his skating is is not amazing. But he does match speed pretty well. I mean, yeah, that it's not terrible. <laughs> it's just needs a little bit of work, I think. And, and it's interesting. I don't know what your opinion is about on 
Oh, I guess we talked about a couple weeks ago about him making the Sharks out of camp because we added yeah. so many defenders. That's um, actually uh, about what 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 I was gonna uh, talk about to wrap up my thoughts on mm-hmm. on uh, on Henry that the Sharks definitely do have a log jam of. Uh, defensemen that are not waiver exempt of course there's a question of if you <laughs> put the entire let's be honest you put the entire sharks defense on waivers how many of those guys would get picked up uh not all of them i i i, I, I can tell you that so let's you know let's be honest about that but sure uh, yeah. but though uh, they do have a lot of guys and there are guys that they may not want to risk for sure uh not that None of them will be picked up. There are guys that, that would definitely get picked up. And so uh, they don't want to risk them. And so there could be a little bit of a numbers game where um, my initial projection had uh, Thrun making the team and them uh, waving a guy like maybe Redeem Shimmick or something like that, right? Um, but uh, I actually, uh, I, 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 I did talk to somebody recently, actually uh, something that I'm going to post uh, uh, later today, but by the time this podcast is out, that you guys will see in the article that mm-hmm. I talked with one NHL scout and he was like, yeah, uh, 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 Gavanka, he's going to make it ahead of Thrun. Uh, mm-hmm. And part of it is, you know, Gavanka's role as kind of offensive guy, right? The Sharks have nobody like that. And sure. also to uh, Thrun is, the main thing is that he's waiver exempt. I don't think it's a, uh, it's a it's a critique on Thrun's ability at all. It's just that it's a bit of a numbers game. You know, the Sharks have I think uh, nine guys or so, nine defensemen or so that uh, would they would need to pass through waivers, a, G- a Gavanka yeah. included, and um, a Hotiak also. Yeah, that's another guy that people don't 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 uh, forget is not For waiver sure. exempt this year. So uh, so in, 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 in that scenario, then, yeah, maybe Thrun, uh, because of this numbers game, uh, you know, uh, goes back down and you expect him to come back up. You expect him to excel, but you never know, though. You know, guys get sent down, you know, mental, you know, uh, men, uh, mental stuff happens and, you know, they're not, you know, they, 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 they kind of lose, uh, lose a step down there, but we'll see. Yeah, it's, it's tough to project, I guess, the – Unless something happens before training camp where they move out a few of these guys, but you've got like McDonald, Shimmick, Ahotiak, and Gavanka all not waivers exempt, right? So right. Like, and besides the 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 standby guys too, that uh, mm-hmm. you know, Burroughs, Rudda, Vlasic, yeah. Ferraro, Benny, exactly. right? So, guys yeah. that you expect are not gonna get waves to be sent. Uh, and uh, Kanishov, Kanishov is Kanishov. not not waivers exempt either this year oh. too. So yeah, so that's a, a lot, lot of, of guys. dudes. Yeah, the, it seems to be like a top six, seven, and then there's four other dudes. So it's yeah. like, uh, it's it's kind of tough. I, I want Thrown to make it, and I feel like based on his season, he should make it. Um, well, but, training camp, though, yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's yeah. the training camp, yeah. and also you, the Garakuda would have like a world's better defense if they started the year with Thrun, Mukamadulin, rather than like Merkley and Kanaisev. Sure, sure. Yeah, but, yeah, but so that, that'd be interesting at least. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, it might be another one of those things like last year where everybody thought Bordalo would make it, but they just ran out of bodies and then he got sent down. Mm-hmm. Um, same kind of thing with, with Thrun. It might happen again. Um, right. But, but we'll see. I can also very well see Thrun excelling so much at training camp mm-hmm. uh, over his competition that they have to, you know, uh, keep him up. So, so yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. So that's Henry Thrun, both of our number sixes. Who is your number five? We're getting the top five, which number is five, yeah. <laughs> really good, actually, I will say, um, overall, that we're going to get into. I think that it's a well-improved top five from last year. It time. is. It is. It is. Uh, uh, number five, I have uh, Quentin uh, Musty. Obviously, uh, uh, Quentin uh, uh, made a name for himself at Dev Camp in the prospect scrimmage, scored a couple of goals there. Uh, but like we've talked about in the podcast, I think his game is still a little bit uh, one-note. And um, I think that he's closer in terms of his tier, right? And I'm going to get to it when we talk about our, our top four. But I don't think Musty is quite in that um, in that top four, top three of Sharks prospects in terms of, okay, this is what we're building around. You know, Musty, they just drafted him and very still very much an unknown. And so um, mm-hmm. obviously you see some of the ceiling, so it won't 
really take a lot, you know, just, a, a, you know, it, it's not far for him to like break into this, this, uh, this top three or four sharks prospects. But right now though, I, even though, you know, top five is a convenient number I, for me in my mind, if I, if I were, if I were to kind of tear it out, I see, you know, a top four for the sharks prospects, mm -hmm. uh, clear top four. I think uh, musty and Thrun are kind of together. Musty's ahead of Thrun just because of Musty's ceiling. And then seven through twelve ish, I think, kind of all are interchangeable. So that's kind of how I see it. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Musty was like regarded as like a steal of the draft, which is always fun after <laughs> after right after the draft. Like you got a you know a steal at uh, twenty six overall, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, an interesting thing for the Sharks because a lot of times it's felt like who did we pick at twenty six overall? Why are we yeah, doing yeah. this? Yeah. Um, I, that's what about. people said about Beastead, and that's what people yeah, said exactly. about uh, Wiseblot. And so, you know, yeah. well, you know, one no. out of two isn't bad. So, <laughs> yeah, one of them turned out pretty well, which we'll talk about. Or appears but, um, to be, yeah, appears, appears to be, to be yeah. for so far. But uh, <laughs> yeah, Musty felt like a steal in, in, in where he fell to, just because it, it does feel like he does have a high ceiling. Um, he's got great puck skills. He's a great playmaker. Um, he is a big winger as well mm -hmm. when he for actually sure, uses sure. his size. I think one note is a, is a decent way to describe him or just kind of a little inconsistent is, mm -hmm. is, is the way that I would say. He's not um, always on that like uh, tear that sometimes he gets onto where sure, you, you recognize sure. that he's like the best player on the ice and sometimes he just kind of fades away, um, yeah, yeah. which is a lot of young prospects. And oh, I mean, a love... lot of the guys that we have 7 through 12, right? So Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And you love to see the the flashes that he has that are that are amazing, so... Um, he's going to go back to the OHL for next year and, and probably kill it. Like I imagine he's just going to um, tear up the league. He had a pretty good year last year. He had 78 points and 53 games, which is good. Um, I would, I don't want to project it. But I think he's going to go over hundred points would be my guess. Okay. So we'll see, you know, things change, things happen, but it wouldn't surprise me if that's the kind of year he has when he goes back to the OHL. So um, you, you expect him to break into sort of the top three, four conversation by the end of the year then? That's, maybe. That's what you're, okay. <laughs> I think. Um, hey, take a possible. stand, all right? <laughs> it take also a stand depends on. And, yeah, get I honestly it, think right? that the top four is, like you said, the tiers. And, and also this is spoiling who my five is. My five yeah, is yeah, also yeah. Quentin Musty. <laughs> it's, it's, getting, <laughs> okay, yeah. it's getting a little bit like back to back here, but my five sure, is sure. also Quentin Musty. But um the top four, I think, is on its own tier, and and Quentin and Henry Thrun kind of provide a really good five six that could jump up depending on how well they do next year. Right. right. Um, I wouldn't say that even if he puts up hundred points that he would be in my top four. Okay. It okay. depends on what the the next guys do. Sure, sure. Um, it's just a more of a progression thing for for musty but i like him overall i watched him at the world junior summer showcase um he had some good games and some like um decent but not doing a whole lot games mm -hmm. um but uh, he did look out of place which is good because he's playing with mostly all of like the classes that are one or two years above him sure. in that uh, small tournament so he didn't look out of place uh, for sure and then obviously we we you know, he was heralded as like going to make the Sharks after the uh, prospect scrimmage where he um, looked like he was flying out there. Mm -hmm. You're shaking your head. No, so probably not. I mean, <laughs> again, you know, one note is it's hard to make it in the league uh, as an 18 year old. If you're just good at one thing, kind of, which is, I guess, with him, is just sort of this kind of uh, straight on like skating skill, speed kind of like. But that kind of like hard charging game, like. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a 30 year old veteran defenseman, you know, uh, not, you know, not, not, not the greatest defenseman in the world, but a Joel Edmondson is not gonna, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna knock him down, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, a guy, a guy like that, and so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I, he definitely needs to add a little more or get stronger and faster. You know, you can't get strong enough and fast enough where you can kind of rely on your like one go to thing, your mm -hmm. A game, like we talked about, um, but, uh, He's 18. Yeah, he's he's not. He's not fast enough or strong enough. So, mm -hmm. yeah, he did have an illness during his draft year too. That kind of um, set him back from like being as consistent as you know he can be. So, mm -hmm. um, be interesting to see him get a full season for next year. Um, okay, number four. Now we're getting into the big four, yep. <laughs> um, which we've said is its own tier. Shang, yep. you have a number four. 
have uh, uh, Philip uh, uh, Beestead. And uh, Beestead, you know, we've obviously seen his progression from a pick uh, last year where people are like, uh, this guy, you know, this guy is like a second rounder. You guys uh, trade, not only did you guys trade back from number 11, but this is the first guy that you pick in the Mike Greer, uh, uh, Greer era. And it looks like uh, it, was a, it was a great pick by Greer and uh, Doug Wilson Jr., at least so far. Um, I think uh, Beestead has impressed in every tournament. Uh, any kind of showcase that, that, that he's been a part of uh, since the draft, obviously World Junior Championships and most recently the, uh, the World uh, Junior Summer Showcase. And so anyway, uh, the way that one scout uh, put it to me is that he saw uh, the Sharks' uh, top three, top four prospects uh, as sort of the, the, the core, the future of the Sharks, and that you're hoping that these guys hit and then the rest of the guys uh, if you get one to three out of them, that's not that's not bad. You know, hopefully you're hoping for three, obviously. You know, uh, but yeah, but uh, so 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 Beastead, I think um, uh, right now he does track, and we'll see. You know, he's gonna have a, a larger role. More will be expected of him. You know, last year he was the SHL Rookie of the Year. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe he surprised people a little bit last year. He's not gonna surprise anybody this year. And so, um, can he take uh, another step? Uh, you know, we'll see. But uh, so far, it's looking uh, so good for, for him to be a very, very solid a middle six center in the NHL. Yep. And my number four is also Philip Beestead. But I will say it was really, really close between yep. three and four for me. I went back and forth between who's three and who's four. For yeah, I think this is fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ultimately, I landed on Beestead just because of like very top of the ceiling kind of thing. Sure. Um, I think sure. Beestead. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I think like you said, Bistet has a a profile of a good middle six center. I think in the NHL, I think that's ultimately what you're looking for is like a second or third line um, center out of him. Um, he's a lot faster this year. I watched um, Bistet uh, like I went back and reviewed a lot of his mm -hmm. tape after they drafted him, and I didn't wasn't in love with his acceleration. That was like. It felt like he was getting caught from behind a lot, especially when he would turn out from behind the net. He'd get caught like all the time. And um, he's kind of really improved it this year. Like his mm -hmm. feet are a lot better from what I can tell. Okay. okay. Um, again, this is all video work and stuff like right, that. But right. I, feel, I feel like his speed has improved, especially because he's such a big guy that mm -hmm. he's like six foot three or six foot four, whatever he is. Um, he looked a little lanky on the ice. He's starting to get a little bit more muscle, it feels like. Mm -hmm. And I think that's helping his speed just a touch. And um, what's always been there about him is that he's just very, very aware of the play. And I've talked about that for Beastad a lot, is that he has a good uh, awareness for loose pucks. He's got a really good awareness of his positioning on the ice. So we talked about like Bordalo. I feel like his positioning isn't always there. Beastad does feel like he's in a very good position to get pucks back and then go the other way with them all the mm -hmm. time which is what stood out to me when I watched him. Um, and then this year he like stepped into the SHL was their third line center right off the bat and then just never left. He got mm -hmm. in some power play time as well. Um, and he just kept improving. And that's, that's honestly, that's why he became like the SHL rookie of the year is he just looked like every month he was getting better, getting more yeah, comfortable, yeah. Um, starting to beat defenders one-on-one, -on -one. like his rush patterns would improve monthly <laughs> like before it was like he'd kind of defer and wait around and now he's just trying to like get around a man in the neutral zone and, and take off um so i really like beast that's progression i watched him now i don't know how many times and then the world juniors world junior summer showcase mm -hmm. um he's looking like an important probably top six center for team sweden at the world juniors for uh december right and he up. already was the uh, the last role juniors he was a top six center so exactly so he's looking like going to be a super important role for them and i think um you know it's kind of like a, it was a big headline when he went back uh got loaned back to sweden because mm -hmm. it's like before training camp and i wonder this is not this is not insider information it's just something that i'm wondering is that how much of this is based off of what happened with eklund where they kept him the whole training camp Mm -hmm. kept him nine games and then sent him back and it felt like right, he right. never got his footing in the shl when they'd already started in september essentially with their season mm -hmm. um i wonder how much of this decision to send Beastet back now had to be related to that 
Yeah, I, I I don't know. I I don't know if I can speak to that exact point, but I would say though with Eklund though that even though Eklund clearly physically was not NHL ready as an 18 year old, his brain though was you know he 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 was he was surviving out there as an 18 year old because he just was that hockey smart. Oh, you yeah. know I don't know if B said as quite uh, that sort of uh, high end you know maybe elite kind of uh, sort of. Uh, um, uh, processing of of the game. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I, I I think the Sharks would would keep them if if B said could legitimately compete for a uh, top nine role on the Sharks. Yeah. Um, I think that I think they would. But I think that at this point though, that that's sort of a, still a reach for him. Uh, he still needs to uh, you know uh, progress. But it's good to hear, like you said, that there's obvious progression that you're seeing. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's um, pretty obvious, and it, I don't think anyone actually expected him. Um, cause he played in the U8 or the world junior championship right before he was, uh, drafted by the sharks. And this was the world under 18. Mm-hmm. Um, he put three points up in six games, which was, it's not amazing. Like Havlet, I think had like 10 points in six games that, that tournament as a defenseman. Um, and Sweden was an absolute, like great team. They had like her. Oh, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this was their U18. So he set played like second or third line center on that team. Mm-hmm. And then within, six eight months he's getting 10 points in seven games in the world junior championship right well the next the next real juniors i mean i i think i i asked people after that real juniors that Mm -hmm. of that swedish group that got drafted ahead of him or around him uh like karamaki um uh ogren uh, Ogren, right and and beastet that uh, people i talked to were like yeah uh, we we were wrong on Beastead. Like uh, Beastead would go ahead of the of, of those guys in a, in a redraft. All of those guys. Um, yeah. And so that speaks to uh, just sort of his progression, and it's continued since uh, obviously since that World Juniors. Yeah, they took this kind of um, this uh, approach of a pro- project pick at the twenty eighth. Like they knew that he wasn't you know ready, but he had a good frame. He had a great uh, like defensive center mind, and they were like, "There's some puck skills there too." Uh, maybe he develops into it, and then he just kind of rocketed off the past sure. year, which is which is awesome to see. Yeah, um, you love to see it. Yeah, it, it, you know the other guys like like Armaki had a little resurgence towards the end of the year. He had a, a down year in the All Sven skin, and then his playoffs, he's done a lot better. Um, same with Oslin. He well, not the same. He actually had a good year the whole year. Um, but I think if you asked any scout now, who would you rather take? I think most would still take Beast, or most would now take Beast. That yeah. So. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Um, it was a great pick by the Sharks. I wanted Yuri Kulik at the time, but <laughs> that was just like my own bias, I think, in the in the, the draft. And both did well, well. Kulik would have been a great pick too. So yeah, both were were the right there. And there was a lot of people also cram, clam, uh, clamoring for Brad Lambert, which well, <laughs> I like Lambert, but I you know I think I'd still have rather have Beast at right now. He seems like he could be an important you know role player for the Sharks. And, mm-hmm. and role sounds bad, but like. You know, second. No, I line. mean, you win with you. You can win with yeah. guys like him in in theory. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And this isn't a, a amazing comparable because I think you know Sean Couturier is like an all star hockey player, but mm-hmm. I feel that similar kind of center is who I see him as. But like, obviously not first line caliber like Couturier is. So, um. Anyway, poor, a poor man, Sean Couturier. So. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a poor man, Sean Couturier. But, but you know. <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> you know, it takes a lot for him to make out, but I still think he's going to need a few more years, especially adjusting to North American ice too. Sure. So, because he's only played in Swedish um, ice pretty much. All right. So that's top four. Top three. Now we're getting down to it. Mm-hmm. Shang, who okay. is your top three? Number or three. three. Yeah. yeah. Number three, I have uh, Shakir uh, Mukumadulin. Mm-hmm. And a um, couple interesting things I heard uh, from uh, about uh, Mukamudul, and some people will find him still. And I think, uh, you know, the reason why I have him above Beastead, uh, and you alluded to it, is that, you know, th- if everything comes together with Mukamudul, that uh, he should be a more valuable player than a Beastead, even if everything comes together, you know, all things being equal. Uh, if everything comes together for both those guys, uh, Muka Mudulin is probably a, a more valuable player. But though, um, B set's floor is probably safer. You know, Muka Mudulin, we could see at uh, times too, you know, like he is, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's this big guy who can skate, but it can be awkward sometimes too. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's not always the, the, the smoothest looking. So um, I had a scout say to me, I will probably have Muka Mudulin a couple of spots lower on your list. So, uh, you know, 
But then I had another scout say to me, actually, I like Mugwindula more than Eklund. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I think, I think the the re, the reason for this range is because just because, uh, again, that uh, you know, Mukumadulan at this point is still not the smoothest looking uh, player at all times. Um, but again, though, you see the different tools, and they are, they, you know, they obviously are coming together. You know, had a very good season in the KHL. Um, I think he was good uh, for the Barracuda when he came over the 12 games or so that he played there. And so that combination of uh, length of skating of, uh, of, of size height, and he, and surprisingly good uh, puck play um, mm-hmm. all that combines to, if, you know, if he's able to put everything together, uh, you know, we have a guy that uh, top four uh, uh, easily, if it comes together and maybe might, kind of flirt with like a number two defense and maybe you know i know being a little a uh, little maybe a bit optimistic there on that but i just thought it was interesting though just that that range of, of sort of uh, uh outcomes you know uh that that uh, that scouts were kind of or not outcomes but sort of uh rankings were where uh, mm-hmm. mukumadulin did range yeah yeah uh, it's uh, he's kind of a divisive prospect i guess he's sure. also my number Don't three read. yeah uh he's my number three as well so now we've got a match for six, five, four, and three, <laughs> um, which you know I think it's it feels like the the right tier list for the Sharks in terms of how we've got them. Right. But Mukamadula and 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 Beast that were really hard to rank for me, just because I think there is a lot of risk factor with Mukamadula that I don't think there is as much risk with Beast. That I mm-hmm. feel like in some capacity, Beast that is probably going to make the NHL. I just feel like it based off of what I've seen, Mukamadula. There's times when I'm like, yes, this guy is going to be a top four defender for the Sharks. He's, you know, he's got great length. He can cover a lot of ice fairly quickly for somebody his size. He's mm-hmm. got a great point shot. He competes really hard. He can be physical. Um, but then there's other times you're like, I don't think I've ever seen an NHL player try to make that that turn like that. Like, I don't think I've ever seen, <laughs> like, sometimes he can be just a little bit awkward on his skates. Um, and then sometimes he just loses his defensive coverage and can just kind of forget where his man is going. But, you know, I think there's still just a lot tiring out with him. And he's been that way ever since he was drafted. The Muka Madulin draft pick was for, for people who follow like the internet drafts, the internet scouts, those kind of guys, um, which I guess I am one. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was, it was like universally panned that. Oh, Muka sure. Got, yeah. I remember where yeah. he was. Um, yeah. The guys from like, he, EP and stuff like that. We're just like, I cannot believe he got drafted here. He's like a third rounder at best. Like there's so much wrong with his, you know, X, Y, Z, his game. He's so raw. Um, It's been that way ever since he got drafted. It just felt like the last year and it's good on Greer and company to identify it. He kind of took off. He put up 25 points in 67 games in the KHL was playing on like their like top two lines or so Um, looked really good most nights. And um it, it's not telling but it feels like they did the team of iron trade not just for the draft picks but also because muka Badulin was in the deal oh sure and they, and they knew that that's the type of player they were missing in their defensive pipeline yeah i mean um, I, I think they knew and i don't know this actually i think i i do know this uh uh you know they weren't getting uh, uh hughes nemich mm-hmm. uh mercer yeah. those guys those guys weren't weren't on the table there just there wasn't enough competition for meyer to, to mm-hmm. force New Jersey to ante up to, to that level. But on the next tier of, of, of prospects for the Devils, Mukumadulin was top of the list uh, for the Sharks. Yeah, and I think a lot of people were expecting to get Alex Holtz because Alex Holtz has connection to William Macklin. Yeah. Um, but they were like, nope. We Holtz's want game hasn't hasn't grown like Mukumadulin. You know, Mukum, you, mm-hmm. know, you mentioned that, you know, last year and that, 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 that growth that Mukumudulin had. If Mukumudulin has one more of those years, then he's gonna, you know, be in the NHL for the next decade or so. And you know, and, yep. yeah, right. So, so you can you can see that. Whereas Holtz, you know, Holtz obviously was the seventh pick of his draft, but that game, his game has not progressed in in any sort of way like like that. And yep. uh, most, you know, you know, I I know that uh, a lot of people saw Holtz and Mukumudulin in the same day. I don't think they were. I think Mukumudulin was is ahead. On, on most people's sort of um, uh, rank, like uh, at least people in the in, in the league, uh, mm-hmm. amateur scouts and, and and whatnot. So a lot, yeah, a lot of people have a lot of questions, a lot more questions about Holtz than Mukumadulin. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's fair. I think um, just Mukumadulin, the way that he 
plays can can match into a role that it's hard for Alex Holtz to, to slot into based on how their games have evolved. Um, Mugamula has just been much more of a slow burn, I think, because Holtz kind of rocketed off as like, uh, had really great, you know, draft year and everything. Um, but yeah, I, I really like the chances for Mukamadulin to really break into the Sharks over the next few years. I do think he needs more time. I think he'll be on the Barracuda for next year um, as like getting their probably top power play minutes, um, just kind of anchoring that team and really more, you know, helping his adjustment. He did great when he came over 10 points in 12 games. He looked pretty solid other than some kind of like defensive lapses and stuff like that. Um, I thought he looked really solid um, almost every game that I watched. So really excited for him. And and it was hard, like I said, between three and four for me, between yeah. Mugu yeah. and, and g but, but uh, Yeah, really- to, to your point, though, uh, yeah, the, the, the defense stuff, is it's easier to learn. Uh, mm. What was surprising about Mook Madulin was that he looked more comfortable with the puck than without it, and that stuff is mm-hmm. harder to teach. And so, if you you know can improve you know the, the the skating a little bit, the defense a little bit, then you really got something. Yeah, that's a good that's a good way to put it. Is that it, the defenders that look like him typically don't have like the hands like he does, mm-hmm. or you know the actual puck skills or the the. Uh, acceleration and the straightforward speed that he does so it's it's hard to to miss basically when he's got the puck on his deck which is great all right that's number three i think two and one people are going to be yeah unsurprised by but go ahead let's let's, let's let's do our our two and one together just to for uh uh to, for a little bit more suspense so and anyway uh what i have to say about both of them you know that's kind of related anyway so um, mm-hmm. So, okay, so my number one is uh, Will Smith. Uh, that, of course, makes number two uh, Willie Mecklen. So who, do, who, do, who is your number one? Yeah, number one is, is Will Smith, and number two is Willie Mecklen. Okay. So <laughs> we have matched our top six, <laughs> um, which, you know, I think it's – I think um, I think it's right. But anyway, yeah, let's go with yeah. one, two. Lots That's to okay. Say about you. Yes. That's okay. But anyway, though, um, so I, I did mention uh, one uh, sort of uh, – uh, contrary opinion about Eklund uh, that someone had Mukumadulin ahead of Eklund. Not that mm-hmm. this scout does, doesn't like Eklund, but I think this scout was just kind of seeing stars with Mukumadulin. That if it all comes together for for mm-hmm. for Mukumadulin, then like that could be more valuable than a you know who some project now in Eklund as a second line ish uh, a winger. Uh, but uh, and you know different scouts have, have different opinions. So again, you know when we talk about. Uh, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, there's a consensus. And so you ask five scouts, 10 scouts, uh, something, and they'll all answer the same way. And so you kind of get a sense of that, right? Uh, like, for yeah. example, last year, if you asked 10 amateur scouts, uh, who's the number one pick of the draft, probably 10 out of 10 will say Connor Bedard. Uh, you know, maybe if you ask like 50 or 100, then maybe someone will say someone besides Connor Bedard. Um, but if you asked, uh, um, I think, scouts, like, who is the best Sharks prospect? Uh, most will say Smith, but um, someone told me Eklund. And I think actually, if if you ask enough, maybe you might even get Mukumadulin uh, up there too, because again, just sort of the ceiling of a, of a Mukumadulin. But anyway, though, so Eklund over Smith. And so I asked this scout, um, does that mean you don't you don't like Smith? Um, that was my first stop. He said, no, no. Uh, 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 he said that uh, Smith is a future top liner uh, for your franchise. That's his belief. But he believes that Eklund can still be a franchise player. And so that is uh, now, you know, when Eklund debuted and also when the Sharks drafted him in 2021, uh, that that was sort of the um, the group think, right? That because he fell, you know, he wasn't supposed to be there for the Sharks at number seven. And then he was able to make his NHL debut. And even though he was kind of physically overmatched, you can see the, uh, mm-hmm. the just, you know, uh, how smart and how brilliant he could be in those nine angel games he played in the first season. And so there was an assumption that, oh, this guy is going to be in, indeed a franchise elite first line player. And obviously, Eklund went back to the SHL. He really struggled coming uh, going back to the SHL. Uh, last year, the Barracuda, he was good, but I wouldn't say that necessarily that he, you know, he didn't blow doors off offensively. Um, 
And so I think that uh, the group think now, and I'm, I'm with it, uh, I'll admit, is sort of camping down expectations for Eklund uh, into mm-hmm. more of a second line winger, a really good second line winger. I don't worry about the size. I think he's such a smart player. And um, as David Quinn called him, an honest player too. So he's going to give you a good defensive effort too. So he's going to give you a good, smart, 200 uh, foot effort along mm-hmm. with a lot of brilliance on the offensive end. And so, uh, so I feel, I, I like Eklund a lot, um, but you know, do I see him now as a franchise guy or uh, maybe not? And that's where people I think saw him right after the Sharks uh, drafted him seventh, uh, 2021. Um, so, you know, he definitely was, he was kind of like the, what, what Will Smith is now kind of the, the you know the 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 new hot prospect right mm-hmm. uh you know uh and so now you know william Eklund was sort of post hype and uh post hype uh there aren't a lot of guys that's that that think of Eklund uh as i think a franchise player but uh well here's 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 a scout that that sees that uh so uh and so the, again this is and again this is not taken away from from smith and so if the if 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 the scout is right um then you know the sharks. The sharks will, 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 you know, of course, be thrilled by this. You know, having two franchise forwards, right, uh, yeah. uh, drafted uh, within within three years of each other. So, but you know, we'll see. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I think that uh, Eklund most nights on the Barracuda was their best forward outside Perfect. of maybe Andrew Agazino, but yeah. he's he's like in his own tier because he's just you know he's a thirty year old uh AHL right. and HL tweener, right that yeah AHL MVP all-star game. type yeah, yeah so. he's perfected the game that he plays so mo- sometimes it was Agassino who's the best player but a lot of times it was Eklund and um you know the, the Eklund hype train got off off the rails a little bit I think when he got drafted and then it got um you know his up and down Swedish year afterwards was just a little uh it was hard to take for times because it didn't feel like Eklund was playing the game that Eklund likes to play and uh, watching it didn't feel correct either. It just didn't match. And he also just didn't play well as a center. And I think we kind of eventually realized that he's not a center. <laughs> and they realized it too. Um, he, But yeah, his year this year, I, I loved it. Um, I think he had the exact rebound year that he needed. I thought he looked good in the NHL too. I thought mm-hmm. he wasn't he out of place at all. Mm-hmm. Um you know, it was... no, he looked he looked better than he did the, the first time around because, uh, uh, you know, he obviously added strength and muscle. Mm-hmm. You know, we've talked about that, but he used it too. He was not a perimeter player. He got you know deep into the into the middle of it, and um, and I think in the future uh, that's what he'll need. You know, because he's not you know he's not Joe Thornton. He's not good enough that he can just stay on the perimeter and and and, and make passes. You know, make you know. Uh, yeah, he's, not, he's also not big enough that nobody can take right. the puck off him. Exactly, or all that exactly. Stuff. You know, he's a great skater in tight. You mm-hmm. know, great edges, and so that that helps yep. him along along the wall. But yeah, he he he's not necessarily going to. Uh, just make a living off that but what we saw we talked about you know uh guys in their a game and what else they have besides that Eklund has a lot of game beyond his sort of you know if, we, if you want to count uh what we saw the first time he was in nhl as sort of his a game that playmaker type right you mm-hmm. know you know making those flashy you know spinorama moves like that's sort of his a game right yeah. okay that's great right but he's not you know not a lot of players are going to survive in nhl thrive in nhl with just that but he's added to that he's clearly yep. added to that uh, yep, he's and, added yeah. strength. He's added uh, defensive responsibility. He's mm-hmm. got a he's a great competitor. Like I think he's going to be a good player. Yeah, he's going to be a good yeah. player. But you know, now we're talking about sort of the well, is he going to be a franchise guy? Is he going to be a first line guy? And yeah. so that's sort of is he going to be your about. like? And they're they're different players entirely. But is he going to be like your Timo Meyer? You know, absolute first line winger, or is he sure. going to be more like a Gus Nyquist? A, you know, kind of second line, good sure. point producer, but not that kind of absolutely first liner, you know? Right. And right, I think right. that's kind of where I land as well, because he's he's number two on mine, like I said. Mm-hmm. I think after, you know, putting together the D plus one year's draft plus one and this year's draft plus two, put them together. I think second line is where I see his projection at, but I think he's mm-hmm. got a good realistic shot to get there with some some careful development. I think he makes the team out of camp too. Um just because I think the, you know, they added some skilled wingers, but I think he has got such a well-rounded game that a lot of guys might be missing that they added. That sure. I think he's going to find his way on the Sharks, not just because he's a very skilled player, but because he's well-rounded. 
Yeah, he has he has a he has that B game, and so mm-hmm. yeah, uh, he and Thrun, uh, they're not exactly the same type of prospect, but I, I think even though there's the the numbers game is sort of suggesting that they might they may not, they may not uh, break camp with the Sharks, but of course though uh, injuries can happen, so you know that player you know uh, uh, rosters don't stay entirely healthy uh, of mm-hmm. course throughout all training camp, so that 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 should help those guys, but also too I just think that. Uh, uh, they're going to play a mature and smart enough game. They'll kind of force the Sharks' hand, like, "Hey, we have to keep, 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 keep these two. They're yep. too, they're too good. Uh, 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 you know, co- you know, compared to the rest of our, our roster, to you know, send them down to the, you know, you're not helping them. in to at a certain point, you're not helping them anymore if you send them to Barracuda because they don't need it. You know, and yep. I don't think Eklund needs it. Learn maybe, Thrun maybe uh, could 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 use a little time out there and be like the man out there and that that could mm-hmm. that could be good for him but you know Eklund Eklund did it like you said last year most nights he was uh, one of the um uh, uh you know Barracuda's two best players even if the offense numbers don't blow you away um mm-hmm. the overall maturity in his game and both sides of the ice was there and so yeah that's uh mm-hmm. that's something definitely that he can hang his hat on and I, I think we talked about this with a lot of guys is the progression curve, right? You, you want yep. them to focus on something that they're not great at and make it better. And that yep. was, doesn't have a great shot and he's not very strong. Mm-hmm. And then he went out and got stronger got and stronger. got a better and worked on a shot. Like, I'm yep. not saying he's got a great shot or anything because he's still fine, I think, yeah. <laughs> but it's better than it was. Yeah. It was but a lot of times, weird. right? Like if, if you have a strong a game, you don't need to, add more a game to, to because if you add more a game then you're a superstar you know but yeah. you, you you add some b game you add you know you, you you become like average or competent at things that you were bad at before mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you you've, you've transferred yourself as a player um yep. so no one's asking again you know going back to uh Bortle, because he's such a uh kind of a uh, divisive prospect at this point like no one is asking him to win a selkie no one is expecting that of him no one is asking him to even be Willie Mecklen, you know, like mm-hmm. Bortolo may never have that label of being an honest player, but he's got to be competent at least at, at the defensive end. He can't be a liability. He's not yep. good enough. You know, like Eric Carlson is good enough offensively that Eric Carlson can't afford to be a liability sometimes because defensively, because he's so good offensively that <laughs> you take, you know, the, the yeah. overall impact is still like way in the positive, right? With like with the Carlson. It is not with a with a borderlow, at least at the NHL level. And so, but if you add those, you know, the the B part of your game, the that you know, if you add to that, that you're not at least hurting your team. If you know, if you're not scoring, but you're not hurting your team, then okay, then the team can carry you for a little bit until you start scoring again. Yeah. Uh, I love Eklund. I uh, one of my favorite Sharks prospects. That's my my last thing. And putting him at you know number two and as the you know projection of a second line player feels like it's going to hurt a lot of opinion or, or feels like I'm down on him. And I, and well, I'm it's the consensus think, now. I think, I think though, it's what yeah, he is. So, yeah. So, so um, you've already talked about um, your, your number one, Will Smith mm-hmm. um, just ahead of Eklund and, and how that's kind of been the consensus among scouts for right now. And that's where I've got him slotted too. is um, after he got drafted. I think he kind of moved ahead of Eklund only for, you know, some people might disagree. Like you said, uh, this is the ultimate ceiling. I think Will Smith, where he was drafted fourth overall the year that he's had and, and um, just his overall skill level, I think matches more of a first line talent uh, rather than possibly a second line talent. And that's kind of the the biggest jump. Um, there's still a lot of development that needs to happen with Will Smith. And I think he's going to the right place. He's going to go to Boston college and round out his game. Um, like we've, we talked about a few times. Um, to really match that number one center role, and that's what no, his no, no. expectation we're, we're, is. We're a we're a P a BU podcast here. Okay? Oh, we're a BU uh, podcast. <laughs> we have to be all right. <laughs> uh, the I am I am a fan of <laughs> Providence College. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, RPI like for all... the win, baby. RPI. <laughs> I like all the Boston teams equally. Okay, we've got a Harvard kid, we got a Boston College kid, we got a Northeastern. You know. Uh, two kids actually northeastern i shouldn't say kids two players um but anyway uh, will smith he's got to round out his game to really match that that number one center role and what i worry about is that a guy like dylan strome and if you remember dylan strome just finally broke in this year as like a 25 year old with washington after his like fifth team to really be what they consider a, a number one ish center 
in the NHL. Still a limited player, yeah. But yeah, but he put up like sixty something points, sure. and it was like, all right, I'm I'm okay enough to play in, you know, eighteen, nineteen minutes a night kind of thing. And it took years, but will or, you know Dylan Strom coming into his year put up like a hundred and thirty points in the OHL and was considered like he's got the skills to be a number one center. Sure, he just didn't have the well roundedness to his game to really be that player. And that's what I think that needs to happen with Will Smith is that, you know, if he doesn't, it turns into the situation where you're not really a number one center if you can't play 20 minutes a night in all situations kind of thing. And I'm really hoping that that's what Will Smith turns into. It's just going to take some time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's not what he's shown so far. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, uh, Strom, yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't want Strom. So, I mean, Strom is still. Strom, Strom is an offensive is. player. And that's yeah, it. on a non-playoff team, I, I might add too. So, yeah. So, but like, that's where I think the, the trap can be is that you see somebody with the offensive skills of like a Dylan Strome that never rounded out everything. Mm-hmm. And if that's what happens to Will Smith, I think that's what Will Smith becomes is more right, of a Dylan right, Strome right, right, player right, right. rather than like your, you know, top six center mm-hmm. kind of thing. But I have a lot of faith in Will Smith. I think he's going to do very well in the NCAA next year. And it's going to be fun to watch. He's playing with Cutter Gauthier. He's going to go to play for the U, U-20s um, or play in the U-20s. And it's it's going to be a fun year for him. And it's also just a probably as a whole, before we get onto some honorable mentions guys and guys who didn't, um, didn't get into, I was thinking about this. I don't think the Sharks have had a better top five prospect pool in 20 plus years. Like, uh, I think it's been since. That's a good. Uh, uh, yeah, that's that's a think good thing. It. I should I should dig into that. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I would. Ninety-seven, ninety-eight. They drafted Brad Stewart, Patrick Marlowe. No, Hayden. no, no. They no. They drafted Stewart a couple of years later. Stewart um, was ninety-eight. But, uh, uh, yeah, or ninety-nine. Ninety-eight. Uh, I think he. Either way, but, it's but like what I mean, like. Uh, but uh, oh, no, if we're using. If we're using sort of the same cutoff, though, um, I think it was, I don't know, uh, it's one of those years. But anyway, if we're using the same, like, the cutoff I use is, like, 25 games. And so, mm-hmm. like, I would, let's say, like, when you drop Brad Stewart, I would not count Marlowe as a prospect at that yeah. point. Because Marlowe had already played uh, a, a full season. But yeah, yeah. Um, I think, though, uh, maybe some, I'm just, so yeah, then- that's actually really great. I actually might, will look into it. I think, I think I'll, I'll write about this. I'm actually very curious uh, what, uh, uh, what I, what, what I come up with sort of there or what, what, what I learned. Um, but yeah, yeah maybe uh, uh, before the 97, 98 season, you know, we have uh, Marlowe, you have Hannon, you just drafted uh, Sturm. Uh, who was drafted a year before but made his sure. NHL debut in 97 98 so he would have been sort of probably in the sharks top five um mm-hmm. so that that might be a competitive one uh but yeah no you, you bring up a, a, a interesting uh, uh, argument that this might be the strongest top five uh, uh since uh, since then but yeah you've had I'll like guys that, that are you know every five or six years they hit with a, pl- a prospect or a, a player yeah uh, like meyer couture hurdle that kind of thing but right. they never were this grouped right like well not never but not recently yeah yeah they, they just haven't been able to do that just because uh they've you know mm-hmm. dropped it so late and stuff right so um so yeah yeah no i, I definitely look into it. of course we had to look into sort of like we can't just say who turned out and who who panned out and who didn't because that's not the way to evaluate it right but it's sure. sort of the at the time you know because you know sharks fans will remember names like jeff jilson you know i remember hearing all yeah. about how great defenseman he was going to be um yeah. and he would have been Petrecki and mirko mueller yeah and... i don't know Petrecki would have made you oh, he, right? he, but he fell late though he was yeah. I think uh, I, I remember that draft year. People thought that he might be. He was one of those guys that was like uh, mm-hmm. preseason, like was 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 supposed to go higher. But then when we got to the draft, he fell. He fell. Uh, but uh, yeah, Mueller, right? Yeah, uh, making an a- angel debut as an eighteen year old. So so yeah, like uh, I, I I that's actually a really interesting uh, interesting question. Yeah. So I I'm going we could to, also... maybe next episode. Maybe next episode. Yeah, I we, could do that. <laughs> we could do that next episode. Yeah, because you could go back through like you know the hockey news or or whatever. You know, I have I have the hockey news yearbooks. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, you can compare the off season top yeah. five from that, that, those years to now. So. Yeah. Uh, be interesting. I think it might come out on top from a lot of teams or a lot of decades, probably. Um, but just awesome for the Sharks. But all right, who did we not mention that you want to give a, a talk about here on the uh, on the podcast? Yeah. Uh, so I these are the names that I I I I looked harder into. I asked people about. Of course, you know when I ask people, 
you know, I, I give them my top 10. I give them sort of my uh, honorable mentions or whatever, right? And, of course, if they <laughs> mention anybody else to me, uh, then then I'll take that into consideration. But uh, no one really said anything. Uh, you know, I think, my, I think this list is going to end up pretty thorough in terms of just how people are seeing the shark system right now. Um, so... Anyway, so some of the guys on my uh, on my list, uh, Ohotiak, and uh, Ohotiak, uh, one scout told me that uh, uh, it's you know I think he likes the the the, the floor of of, of Ohotiak. You know, um, he's going to be a bottom pairing guy, but a very good one, and so a safe angel bet. You know, he's a guy that's right there. And so uh, so so that's that that so one scout had him. Uh, really, I think would have had him. In a in a in a top, in a, in a top ten, it, uh, just just for that, just for the sort of the uh, um, uh, the the floor, his security. Um, another guy I looked I asked about was uh, uh, Tristan Robbins, and uh, one scout said to me that uh, Bordalo and Robbins are were, were close to him, and uh, he actually had that's this is the scout that's had Robbins, uh, Gushin and Robbins ahead of Bordalo. And uh, he said that uh, you know he wanted to see Bordalo take more of a step than than he did, uh, but he recognizes that you know maybe he's being too reactionary. You know, a bad year. Um, cool. So so yeah. I, so again, I think the consensus is that Bordalo's talent is uh, has more talent than uh, than than Gushin and Robbins. But just again, people just aren't sure uh, whether or not he's going to. Uh, uh, he's going to sort of, uh, um, you know, meet expectations. Um, the other names on the list, I'm going to just kind of rattle off. Um, I don't think that they they made sort of the discussion of the top 12 or 13. Uh, Cagnoni, uh, Cardwell, Furlong, LaRock, uh, Guriev, and Makaniemi. So those are our names that I kind of dug, dug into, but... Uh, I don't think I don't think people will necessarily see them as uh, top ten uh, prospects. Oh, and one more name actually I wanted to mention. I did I did ask about because I was curious. Um, so uh, Corey Promen had had a list uh, a U twenty three uh, uh, under twenty three mm -hmm. list, and um, he mentioned at thirteen uh, Rimashevsky, which I thought was really sure. interesting. You know that was he made his top thirteen, and uh, Rimashevsky um, uh, was a seventh round pick. Of, uh, of of uh, of this this past draft, usually not somebody that you see vaulted into uh, top thirteen, especially of a of a sharks prospect group that is a pretty decent one. You know, Promen had had them thirteen, so um, so I, I I was curious about more information about Rimishevsky. So I just wanted to, to add that that uh, one scout that I've seen who's seen him um, likes him, and. Um, yeah, good skills, good skills, good size, very smart. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, can can compete uh, with 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 the pro yet, but has a huge upside. So I think that's uh, maybe that's where Promen's coming from too. That you know, even though he was a seventh round pick, and maybe he fell a bit because of the the Russian stuff, maybe he would have gone sure. higher in a different draft. Um, but uh, yeah, um, the guy with some upside. So anyway, I, I just mentioned him. He was not close on my list, uh, but um, somebody to uh, to keep an eye on. Yeah, yeah, uh, and also not mentioned, I guess. Well, you you mentioned it briefly, but it was the uh, reigning Sharks prospect of the year, uh, Ethan Cardwell. Um, I think um, out of those groups of players, you're looking for like one or two guys to make the NHL out of this like thirteen to twenty five range of the Sharks prospects, and that's the the numbers game that, mm -hmm. that dealing with prospects is. It's a lot of them have you know, everybody's got an upside. Everybody's got a ceiling and a, a potential to reach that ceiling, but not everybody does. And mm -hmm. if you did, you're by far the best drafting team in the NHL with a bullet because every one of your draft picks hits, which never happens. So uh, just something to keep in mind. I think a lot of these guys, I have a lot of opinions on them. And if you want to read them on the um, uh, on my website, half-wallhockey.com, I got 30 plus prospects there, like we talked about, uh, little blurbs about each one of them, including... Um, who you mentioned, Canyoni, Robbins, Cardwell, McNamee, Furlong, The Rock. Um, I think uh, someone's to keep an eye on. Uh, La Rock, as he transitions from a post-injury season, is going to be kind of interesting. We talked about that with Todd Marchant on, uh, on the podcast. Um, how he comes back and gets up to speed is going to be really interesting because he does have some upside based on his, um, 
you know, statistical profile and the way that he plays. And he's, he's a smart player as a defender overall. Um, Robbins is interesting because he's like an example of good at a lot of stuff, but not great at like one anything. Mm -hmm. Um, He's also not, you know, kind of the smaller size as well. So it's hard to project him because he's like average across the board. Um, Or below average in some places. So his floor isn't as safe as uh, say a Hotiuk. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my, why somebody like Hotiuk, even though his, he's not going to project above average and mostly anything right um that he still has like that bottom pairing upside kind of thing he'll he'll (laughs) play and be mean (laughs) he will play be mean and hit people and that's also why they signed someone like artem guriev sure at the ohl was to play be Be mean and hit people (laughs) people. um (laughs) so it you know there's a lot of what I want to say about the Sharks prospects pool is it's improved a lot in mm-hmm. 14 months since Greer took over um, with the benefit of multiple picks and multiple trades. Mm-hmm. Um, it's improved a lot and it's also improved in the top end as well as all the way through the types of prospects. Cause for a couple of years there, we only had Bordelos, Gushins, Robbins, Eklund's, which are all kind of a similar vibe of prospect. Sure. Um, which we kind of knew was going to happen after 2020. Um, but it, you know, it's improved in the type of prospects they have and, uh, and also the uh, top end of them as well. So very excited about this upcoming year, Shane. Um, I think uh, we will probably do throughout the year, maybe prospect check-ins or, you know, just some updates about, uh, how the prospects are doing over. Yeah. Yeah. Play. I maybe uh, maybe at the, uh, the post trade that, Post trade deadline might be a good time to to, to check in yep. on the list because obviously last year's list uh, uh, was uh, uh, transformed after the deadline after the Sharks acquired you know Mook Madulin and Thrun and just for fun here I want to rattle off I just pull this up um, uh, 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 the first San Jose uh, hockey uh, hockey now uh, top ten prospects rankings this is Ooh, um, <laughs> yeah this is uh, from uh, October. October uh, 2021, so two years ago. Uh, this is uh, from actually uh, when uh, Nick, uh, uh, um, uh, I wasn't say rest in peace, but Nick is very much alive. So. I'm sure he's doing fine. <laughs> that's why. That's why I delayed. There. Yeah, Nick's doing great. So, um, so um, anyway, um, yeah, I love you, Nick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, though, um, uh, that, 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 that's from uh, uh, that. Uh, iteration of the podcast but anyway the top 10 was uh, or my top 10 was uh jonathan dolan at number 10 uh now in the shl uh ben goudreau at number nine now uh without an angel contract uh number eight uh daniel gushin and uh he's he's held his spot or around there even though uh uh, he, he, you know, even even though the Sharks prospect uh, list has uh, gotten a lot deeper, uh, number seven was uh, Ryan Merkley, and I actually got some some flack. I got pushback from people I was talking yeah. to, They're like, "No, Merkley should be a top five. So I was like, "No, the guy can't play defense." And well, th- you know, there you go. Uh, number six, uh, a Santeri Hadika, uh, who uh, went to New Jersey in the Meyer trade, and was injured last year, and is looking to kind of reclaim his career. But you know, not the highest ceiling guy. Obviously, I think. Um, He's more like your take for longish, or like somewhere around that level. Of yeah, yeah, or or a uh, Hotiak gave this different yeah, style yeah. of play, though not not the same kind of player. But <laughs> um, you know, Hotika probably ends up being if he does work pan out as a bottom pairing guy. Uh, I had Tristan Robbins uh, uh, number five, um, and uh, yeah, you know, I think uh, uh, Tristan's done well, but. Uh, like like we mentioned, um, you know, hasn't maybe excelled in a particular area that's going to, you know, make his NHL bones. Uh, number four, uh, Artemi Kanyazev, uh, who was uh, traded for uh, Leon Gavanka. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know, I don't know if, uh, if Kanyazev is really going to pan out beyond, again, also a bottom pairing D. Uh, number three, uh, Ozzy Weisblatt. And uh, Weisblatt was much improved last season. Uh, in season, uh, I was hearing by, you know, mid season, late in the season. Oh, here's a guy that is, uh, you know, wasn't even AHL caliber to start the yeah. season. Uh, yeah. really wasn't, uh, but he was able to turn things around and get himself to be a, uh, a kind of a, a legitimate AHL dis- uh, disturber. And so yeah. hopefully he can, that, he can make another leap. Yeah. That's somebody that we actually didn't even mention in passing. Right. Kind of, but 
Uh, well, maybe once or twice we did, but you know, you're, I, I think you're right. By the end of the year, he kind of took on his own role. He was playing more of a junior style offensive game or trying to play that in the beginning, and it wasn't working at all. Um, and then he started to get more pesty, more hitty, as um, Jason Demers <laughs> talked about. And I think that's where his role is going to be, is that kind of pesty player. Right, right, right. And, you know, I mean, not. you probably noticed that we didn't talk about also another guy that's, you know, maybe playing the junior game when he's uh, at a different level of hockey. So it's not working is a bread and co. True. So, yeah. Anyway, though, to round out the list, I had uh, Bordalo at number two and Eklund at number one. And anyway, this is also an illustration of just how much turnover there is. Now, this is not a great Sharks prospects pool, not a deep one by any means. Definitely mm -hmm. not as strong as this one, but look at just how much turnover there has been here, right? Like, there's only, of this top 10, uh, there are only, let's see, I guess maybe four guys that you hope will have high. Well, actually, maybe not. Maybe just three guys, like Bo Eklund, Bordalo, Gushin, high in angel careers. I don't know. Like, there's still hope for Hadika, Robbins, Kanyazev, and Weisblot, but I'm not sure if people see them sure. as, like, you know, potential top six or middle pairing or above defenseman. I don't know. Uh, whereas, yeah, so three guys that have sort of survived this sort of a, a, a attrition. Um, so anyway, uh, that's uh, just sort of an interesting look back. And so, yeah, the, our list is going to look really stupid by probably by the, by the trade deadline, actually. So, yeah. Yeah, actually, <laughs> very much so. And I think the the bigger or a big tournament will also be the World Juniors in, in right. January and, and December because we've got – Will Smith and Beastad and Havlid mm -hmm. all going to be playing there. Maybe Musty if he makes the team. Sure. Um, maybe Lund if he makes it, but we'll see. And uh, it'll be interesting uh, just by the trade deadline, who we add and, and all that. I, I, very curious to find out. But I think it's time to get out of here. We've rambled on for, for a long time. But um, Shang, where, where can uh, the people find you? start with that one <laughs> well the same place they can always find me at at uh, shang underscore pang and san jose hockey now and nbc sharks perfect i'm keen now you can find me on half wall underscore hockey on twitter or half dash wall hockey.com i'm still working out the dashes and the underscores one day <laughs> we'll figure it out but yeah go yeah go read keegan's uh, top uh, as a top 20 and honorable okay. mentions so he talks about 30 prospects and uh with you know some some uh, good detailed blurbs about you know maybe the top 10 top 20 right and yep. so yeah yeah check, check, check that out it's good stuff thanks guys i uh, hope you all have a good week we will see you next time